So you founded an exciting, um, you know, in Silicon Valley, uh, mm -hmm. technology startup. That's right. Um, tell us a little about that experience, right? So we have a lot of people that obviously find it totally amazing to build technology startups. Um, it's pretty hard um, from personal experience, right? <laughs> um, but you're 15 months in, so yeah. what's the experience so far? Yeah, so I mean, our, our idea, we, we came into this idea um, in a weird way. So very early on, we thought like, hey, you know, it, it makes sense that the whole data center will go to some sort of uh, distributed platform. And we thought, well, kind of the future of the data warehouse is kind of very offline side. That's really Hadoop and HDFS, and that's going to be our big data lake. Didn't have the word, but now we do. Mm -hmm. um, it seems logical that there would be some kind of future of kind of the OLTP database, mm -hmm. and I have no idea what that is, but there's like 40 things. Um, and, and our idea was that this kind of area of streaming data or event-driven computing or whatever you want to call that mm -hmm. kind of middle area, which is, you know, immediate but asynchronous, that that would be a big deal. Mm -hmm. And it would serve those two use cases of, like, getting data around and processing it. Um, and so that was what we were really building against at LinkedIn. And after a certain point, um, we saw it getting used. You know, we, we, we released it open source. It kind of got adapted over time by a bunch of places. We thought, hey, you know, this is like a pretty big deal. Like, mm -hmm. and we were we were at our jobs at LinkedIn. We were working for LinkedIn, um, and LinkedIn had you know a set of things it needed. Um, but kind of over time, maybe the percentage of value that was created was no longer mostly for LinkedIn. So when we started, of course, it was internal. 100% of the value was for LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, you open source it. Maybe 90% still for LinkedIn because right. they're using it a lot more. Um, pretty soon, it's more like you know half a percent or something in terms of like where the actual usage is. And we feel like, look, this, you know, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, a, you know, probably in this end state, most companies are going to have some kind of big data platform around streams of data mm -hmm. real-time computation. And um, we have a pretty clear picture of what that looks like. I mean, maybe wrong, <laughs> but at least we have a pretty clear picture of what that ends up looking like. And we've been through this whole process of building it. And that technology is actually a really valuable thing. It's a valuable thing for companies, and when you see what they're doing, it's really interesting. Um, and so we should, you know, we should go focus on that. Mm -hmm. And so that was what we did. We, um, the, the team that was working on Kafka, LinkedIn left, and um, yeah, we, we started this company, Confluent. And yeah, our goal is really that to try and make this streaming platform something that's practical mm -hmm. to roll out, that you know how to manage your data in this way. It's kind of a different way of thinking. Um, and so we've been just focused on um, trying to make that vision reality. So you know, hiring people, picked up a great set of um, initial customers who are who are using our platform, um, building out kind of the rest of the stuff. So a lot of what we had internally at LinkedIn, or what we saw, kind of all these heavy adopters building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very often these types of platforms in a company, it's not just kind of a low-level infrastructure piece, it's actually a whole set of supporting technologies. Mm -hmm. You need to really kind of run and operationalize it. Um, and so our goal is really to provide that, you know, platform, and that's kind of the, the confluent platform, and, you know, it's... Uh, so it's open an open source, source, source kernel and kind yeah, of that's enterprise exactly right. That's exactly right. So it's on it, okay. So you can go uh, download it off our website. It's um, you know pretty heavily used by people who are adopting Kafka because mm -hmm. it kind of comes with more batteries included in terms of building out these right. types of streaming uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. And is it all open source? And then you have a service model around it, or some commercial? Yeah, yeah. So we're, so we're you know we're doing both. Uh, what we have released so far is all open source. Mm -hmm. um, philosophically, I think the mo the idea is um, you know people want to build against an open platform, mm -hmm. and in fact. The, the strength of open source for this kind of thing is people, you know, all of these technologies are changing very quickly. People want something that's going to be around mm -hmm. for a period of time, and right. so they, they want to build against an open platform. But a lot of the kind of management tools and so on can, can actually be closed source. It's, it's really not something that tends to get good open source contributions. Designers don't show up and contribute to you. Tell me about it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> right? Um, so so that's kind of our split, is really kind of the mm -hmm. operational side, I, I, I think is um, okay to kind of try and add some value. Um, the kind of APIs and what the system does, we want to be totally usable as an mm -hmm. open source project. And a lot of the supporting technologies that are more developer focusing, focused, yeah. I think should be totally open source and, and cool. are today. Makes sense. In, you know, as engineer turned entrepreneur in yeah. the last 15 yeah. months, if you yeah. reflect, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but, you know, what 
was easy, what was hard to build this company, and what's the learning? Right again, so there's a there's a lot of people out there that that think, you know, having a great open source project uh, maybe makes a great technology company. Yeah, I, I actually think the opposite. So you know, a shockingly small percentage of open source projects are good. Uh, for commercialization, mm -hmm. for, for a variety of reasons. And it's unfortunate, like, you know, a lot of really interesting developer tools, um, you know, they're, they're, um, they're open source and there's really no business model I can imagine mm -hmm. that will make them successful mm -hmm. companies. Um, we felt like we had a pretty good shot because, um, you know, this is a data system, it can lose your data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's heavily used mm -hmm. and we felt like it had a, you know, you had a good shot at being a kind of big central platform for streaming data in a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. um, so that was why we went after it, even though I would actually say the opposite of what you said, which is, you know, most open source projects probably are not not good. You yeah, know, no, exactly, right? But a lot of companies. people a lot of people think A like, lot of people oh, think they are. Yeah. Hey, I, I yeah, I wrote yeah. Um, you know uh, a thousand lines of code. Let's build a company around it. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and it, it, it's really hard to build companies. And maybe, right? but obviously, you need to have a clear idea of what the business will be and what mm -hmm. people are paying for and why they need to pay and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, what have been you know what's been interesting about it? Um, I would say overall, one of the more surprising things was I talked about our two kind of value propositions. One being, oh, you know, we're going to be a data pipeline that gets data around, and two. Um, it kind of unlocks all the streaming computation. I've been really surprised at the level of excitement about the second one. We mm -hmm. thought that was going to be like more like several years in, people were going to mm -hmm. get excited about that, and it's actually happened much faster. Mm -hmm. That's been one of the more surprising things to me is how quickly people have understood that that area overall and how fast just, you know, not related to us or our company, but just how fast overall people are kind of internalizing that idea, mm -hmm. and that's awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. We're we're really excited about that. What else? What else has been uh, interesting? Are you guys building your whole development team here, or is it a distributed uh, no, team? No, no, it's distributed. So you know, I think one thing for open source companies is you have a pre-existing set of people who are interested in mm -hmm. streaming data in some fashion, or Kafka, or whatever they're they're into, and you totally want to hire those people. Mm -hmm. So, and the the trade-off of having to get good kind of distributed communication infrastructure is like totally worth it to kind of capture that. That what level of people who are well, well, we're using Slack. You have to use yeah. Slack. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or <laughs> HipChat, right? It's a little mm. bit closer mm. to Confluence. I know, I know. Um, well, no, no, I uh, no. We're we're on like Slack. Like it, you know, I was GitHub, I was resistant. I'm resistant to all new apps and services, yeah. but I was forced onto it. And I'm on I'm Slack. Happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm subscribing to all the Slack channels at the company too. <laughs> oh, I should I shouldn't tell that. Um, That's but good. It's, it's pretty interesting, yeah, it's right? Good. In the evening, it's you come good. home, you can really like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no, it's I, funny. I, but I think you know one of the challenges. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you deal with this for any company is actually, you know, for modern management, you want people who are capable and then know what's going on. Mm -hmm. and are oriented in terms of what they have to do. And what, so one of the challenges becomes having people know what's up, like mm -hmm. what's happening, what's right. important, you know, how does this relate to everything else. So I think a lot of these communication tools are actually important in that way and that they give, Absolutely. Um, they make that much more feasible and they actually kind of, you know, maybe your goal is to have um, some kind of total bottoms up management. Every once in a while you hear some startup who's like gotten rid of all managers and mm -hmm. you know they wear togas and whatever happens and then usually come to classes. But like, you know, if your goal is really this kind of very decentralized execution, um, and then maybe, you know, kind of the, the what we're coming out of is more like the army where mm -hmm. it's like totally centralized and you can move like a large number of people. You know, I think a lot of this technology actually meaningfully moves the needle in yep. terms of letting people who are smart and understand what the company is trying to do actually execute independently and coordinate it. And so I think it's like totally cool. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited no, about it. I've, you know, Git changed my life, right? From mm -hmm. like having to arrest the one guy that controlled yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the SVN or yep, CVS yep, success yep, yep, and like, yep. oh, okay, well, let me uh, recreate a patch for you, right? right Very right. now, ah, you know what? I just uh, created my branch. Yep. You can cherry yep. pick, whatever, here it is, right? Yep. So um, what else are you guys using? So Slack, I assume Git, right? Yeah, we're Git. using Slack, we're using Git and GitHub, but we're using Jira. Jira. Uh, you can't somehow escape it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we're using Zenefits, which I hope uh -huh. is still around. Yes, because our benefits are all high. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the, the set of kind of off-the-shelf tools for startups is yeah. awesome. <clears throat> It's much different than a few years ago. Yeah, and yeah. Is, uh, is the team mostly in North America or do you also deal with kind of time yeah, zone yeah. changes? So we actually have a set of people who are in the UK mm -hmm. um, and that's going pretty well. Um, it's definitely an issue with time zones, but um, you, there's also some benefit in that things happen. Right. Things are happening you now. go to bed, the bug is <laughs> fixed right. when you wake that's up. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Cool. Um, and then. Talk a little bit about kind of where do you see the company go? I mean, you talked a little bit about the product. You said um, 40 people so far. Yeah. I, that's that's, that's uh, a fast growth. Um, at this point, I'm sure you know everybody's name. Um, you know, <laughs> data is at a stage where I meet new people every day, sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, where, where, where do you guys want to take this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know where we'll end up in terms of company size or revenue or any of that. I mean, I think with um, with a company, you kind of target it by what you think the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we our feeling at least was this area could actually be a big thing. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, as a result, you kind of have to target that way in terms of how you raise money and how you hire and how you have to go after it. Um, because if you think it's a big thing and you kind of don't go after it like a big thing, then probably somebody else will. <laughs> and then you'll, mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll end up, you know, yep. a bit player, you know, compared to that. Um, so that, that was probably the entirety of the thinking that, you know, dictated our approach was like, well, we felt like, look, um, the streaming data area is like, really dramatically underappreciated in terms of what it can do and what people think it can do and, and so on and so it's going to end up being a big thing and then you know through the process of creating the company and we've actually found that things that, you know I think at least are moving faster than we expected and yeah, so, no. so, I, so th I think it was necessary so yeah. um, I think I saw interest in Kafka definitely the last a three year significant increasing. Yeah. And the problem I always had talking to all those companies is um, yeah, Kafka is this really cool technology. And then the next question is, okay, which company is supporting that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so who, who do I call? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm, yeah, those guys from LinkedIn. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad you guys cool. did that step, right? right? Because I think it's another um, stepping stone or a wall you just have to tear down uh, to accelerate adoption. Right. Because a lot of big companies, right. like, great. Right, technology would love that, but I need to buy insurance for that. Yeah. Who, who do yeah. I buy insurance from? Yeah, right? totally. So, and nobody really provided totally. that. Um, obviously, Cloudera had kind yeah. of a con um, competitive product, right? Mm -hmm. Hortonworks doesn't have anything in it. Mm -hmm. 